Columbus Academy Vikings is number seven, Andrew Dunn. And number seven, Andrew Dunn, is a name we will call a bunch of times this evening, as Jeff Udelnake detailed during the pregame. Mike, you talked to one of the layman coaches who's very impressed with Dunn in the defensive secondary. Well, not only is he a great offensive weapon, but he uh, can almost turn that offense uh, immediately into offense on defense. He is a safety, and they have uh, tried to tell their quarterbacks that stay away from the safety at all costs from throwing the football. They have some folks who go both ways. Dunn is included. This is a pooch kick that will come to the 17-yard line where it's brought ahead by Hewitt into some open field. He will get to the 37-yard line. So the Cavaliers in business, first down 10. Nick Foreman makes the stop, and here comes Lehman on offense. Playoff football from Julia Lamb Stadium. A game was hosted here several years ago by the Sydney City Schools. That, uh, though, involved Delphus Jefferson and Springfield Catholic Central. It was before the home game concept came in in 1999. So this is the first time that Sydney or Lehman has played a playoff game here at Julia Lamb. From the 37, Dembski with split backs and motion coming toward us. He wants to throw. Being chased out of the pocket, he will go down back at the 25-yard line. Dembski pursued from the backside, and Drew Johnson, number 15, who will also see a lot of duty at running back this evening, is able to garner that sack. Mike, that cost Slayman almost 12 right out of the chute. Yeah, I think Dembski thought he was going to get away from that man, just got tripped he up. He has been all year. Mm -hmm. Think about that. Right. He's been getting away, and Jeff Udelnake says the first thing when he thinks of Columbus Academy is speed. Uh, and there was certainly time to throw the football, so good coverage downfield. It, it definitely uh, was a coverage sack. Motion. Hand off back this way with Hewitt. He will stumble forward to the 30-yard line. Gets about five. We will credit that stop to Nathan Fosnaw and also Stephen Waterman. Cavaliers will go to third down, and they have to get all the way to the 47. That'll make it third down 18, as you just heard from your public address. Well, Lehman trying to hit a big play and actually uh, backfired him on the first down. Let's see how, uh, how confident they are they can throw the football here on third and long. The single back is Badgett. We look straight down the line. Dembski wants to throw, rolls out left, unloads, got a completion underneath the Sager, but he's out of bounds at the 38-yard line. Fourth down nine should force the Cavaliers to punt. Good catch by Sager, just uh, well defended, well short of any first down, and so that first down loss costs the Cavaliers, and they have to punt the ball away on fourth down. The quarterback becomes the punter. Dave Ross with Mike Lieber and our cameraman, Dale Couchman. There's a good look at the layman kicking alignment, and we will follow the football with the kick. You can see the upfront blocking. Good snap from center from Jack Haas. Pretty good kick. It'll float downfield, picked up at the 35-yard line. Once again, that's number seven, who we'll see so much of, Andrew Dunn. Gets a decent return out to the 41-yard line. Actually, pretty good coverage by the Cavaliers. Punt a little short and not quite as high as they like to get them. And really good uh, effort by the Cavaliers to get downfield to stop the carry after a short pickup. Falls on the Viking 42. Cavaliers are home here this evening. We would love nothing better than if 52 weeks from tonight, the Sydney Yellow Jackets would also be hosting a playoff game. Academy with double wing, they run motion. Quarterback Dunn brings it this way, got some room in front of him, fakes the left-hand pass, takes off. He'll get out to about the 47-yard line. Palmer over to close on him, but it'll be, he got outside very quickly. I want to give him credit for that. This gain will be sided up to the should be about the 48. I think the chain went down a little too far. But still, that'll set up second down three and a pretty nice scenario off their first down play, Mike. Again, Lehman's defensive end got moved inside, and the back uh, linebackers just couldn't second get there in time, five. and the quarterback was able to get outside. Let's make it second and more like four as they do spot it back even a little farther than we thought. Hand off to the right side. Barhorst with good pursuit, able to bring down Ray Jones. Last week, 
Columbus Academy was a 70 to nothing victor over Grandview, and Grandview had won three games. So that's kind of interesting. 388 yards rushing last Friday night for Academy. A lot of people played, as you might imagine, with that lopsided score. Ray Jones led the team rushing for 91 yards, but also including four touchdowns. This will be third and four. Excuse me. Let's see what Dunn does with a single back. Motion with Jones. He'll carry the mail to the right side into the open field. There's that speed, 35-30. He could be history. Hewitt chases him to the 10, the 5. He may be down inside the one-yard line. I want to tell you, Ray Jones got there in a hurry, and the only thing that enabled Adam Hughes to catch him, Mike, was the concept of geometry, but it looks like a hold or a clip, probably a hold, will bring this one back. There's the official in front of us saying clip. And this will be a spot foul, apparently from the 31-yard line. So, Mike, that's going to negate a whole bunch. That was 52 yards right there, uh, and they're going to bring that back. So uh, that's a tough penalty. You have to wonder if that had an effect on the ultimate run because that occurred so far downfield. Yeah. And I'm sure that's what Columbus Academy is questioning now. And mark it off. Yep, they'll go back almost to midfield. But you know what's interesting, Mike? It'll be a first down. You got it. Yep. First down with a yard to spare. That's what a long gain that was. So keep an eye on Ray Jones. I don't think Lehman has seen that type of speed. They saw some very physical and hard play and quality play out of Marion Local two weeks ago. But in terms of pure speed, I don't believe they've seen this. This will be Jones again to cut it inside, runs into a huge pile, and will go virtually nowhere. Whole lot of Cavaliers in there. Barhorst was in on the play. Elko, 33. Also Judy, 41. Be a gain on the play of just over a yard. We'll call it second down nine. Again, the winner will go to a neutral site next week to play either number two seed Wheelersburg or number seven seed Redding. Official time. And as you heard from the public address, there's a player that I think needs some chin strap attention. And the quarterback jogs off the field there toward the, you'll see him re-entering the huddle here shortly after talking to his coach. Jim Collis is the head coach of Columbus Academy. And now the football's declared ready for play. There's a look at the Vikings as they come to the line of scrimmage. We square things up to look at their split back offense. Now they'll shift. Strength to the right side. Jones in motion. They'll fake to him. Dunn wants to throw. Got a lot of company. Had no chance to either fully roll out or throw as Mark Palmer badly disrupts that play for the Cavaliers. It's going to be third down and a whole bunch. In fact, 15 yards for Columbus Academy. Same play, same looking play that they ran a moment ago where uh, Jones got the 52 yards, lost some of that on the penalty, but then the quarterback kept it this time and Lehman's defense right there, two defenders to make the stop on Dunn. And Mike Jones is a sophomore. There are the split backs, motion comes toward us. Dunn slips it off on the draw play. Cavaliers go in pursuit. Badgett does a pretty good job getting to Scott Smith, 32, who was a 1,000-yard rusher a season ago. Gain of one, fourth and 14, we're looking at a punt. So here we have two fairly uh, high-powered offenses. Uh, neither one can muster much offense, although uh, Academy were not for a big penalty. Certainly had uh, things going their way at the one-yard line. The punter? He does it all, Andrew Dunn. Takes a good snap from center into the football. It's allowed to hit at the 15, fielded back at the 13. Penalty flag probably on the Cavs. That's Hewitt who will not get any further than the 15 yard line. Let's check the flag. Still scoreless, almost halfway through the opening frame, and it looks like we're going north. Which means the Cavaliers will be inside their 10-yard line. Yep, it's a clip. 
illegal block against Lehman. Well, so far scoreless in the quarter. Each team has had the football once. Lehman about to begin their second possession. Not quite the field position they had a moment ago, though, as the ball is going to be placed at a the seven and a half. Seven and a half. Yep. Half the distance to the goal. It'll be first and ten for the Cavs. Cavaliers had to punt on fourth and nine. Mike Columbus Academy punted on fourth and 14, so even though they'd garnered a first down, kind of a washout, but they did have a 51-yard gain negated. Hand off to Badgett. He is tackled, let's generously Badgett say, by committee, including Danny Lavalley. Another penalty flag. This game not off to a good start from that standpoint. I think... Uh, Academy uh, did not stop on the whistle blew and it ultimately may cost uh, their team 15 yards. Personal foul face mask. This is whistled on Academy, but they signaled personal foul. So that means, no, that isn't, he signaled a face mask. So that would be 15. Given the fact that a signal was given for the personal foul before the face mask. This will put the football out at the 20, almost the 25 yard line. First and 10 for the Cavs. Well, that was a real late five. face mask. Yeah, but that's the signal we saw. Yeah. I would agree. First down Lehman now, that, that's a different position. They've got the ball near the 25. That's very different. Jim Dembski calls the signal, hands it off to Hewitt. Cuts up the middle. He worked pretty hard to get three yards right there. Knifing through to help cut him down was Ethan Robertson, number five. He got three, he'll need seven, second and seven. Clock continuing to move, 548 showing in a scoreless first quarter. You can bet Lehman would like to uh, grind out uh, first down after first down, kind of wear down a faster, lighter defense. Mike, when Hewitt gets to 72 yards, he'll be at 1,000. When Badgett gets 20, he'll be to 1,000. That's Badgett right there to get about three or four. The pile actually does a good job moving forward for Lehman. Host of tacklers on the play for Academy led by Scott Smith, 32. The gain will be five, making it third and two. Third down, two. Let's see if the Cavaliers go to Badgett. There it is, straight ahead for a layman first down. Penetrating the 35 out to the 36. Done in on the tackle. Nice job leading the play by 73 Brady Bates of layman. They don't get a real good spot, but it's still a first down. There isn't any question about that. The nose of the football is almost over the chalk at the 35. And you can line that up and see that it's good by about eight inches. First and 10, Lehman. High formation this time. Penalty flag, preliminary movement on Lehman will kill the play. Mike will look at first and 15 as we salute. F.D. Lawrence Electric, Minster Bank, Medicine Shop Pharmacy, Geyers Chrysler in Fort Laramie, AAA Shelby County, including Travel to Paradise, Goffney Furniture, Bunny's Pharmacy, the First National Bank of New Bremen, Sydney, Botkins, and Wapakoneta. Holiday Inn in Sydney and Holiday Inn Express of Troy and Huber Heights. Ernst Sporting Goods of Sydney, Piqua, Minster, and Versailles. It's our fourth penalty of the first quarter. Both teams whistled for two of those. As we look straight down the line of scrimmage, Dembski to Badgett takes it over the right side. Gets maybe to the 33. He'll be stopped by, well, we don't show a 54. So much for that. Brian Suter on the tackle. So this will be second down and 11. Second and 12. Now at the four minute mark of the first quarter, still no score from Julia Lamb Stadium. Pro set for the Cavs, split backfield. Tight ends on the left, they'll try Badgett to that side He'll help to move that pile, which may end up getting him about three yards. Following Bates. 
And also Hewitt, a good job in there for the Cavaliers helping to lead that play. And Judy from tight end. The gain will be ruled two yards. Make it three. This will be third down eight for Lehman. Possession play up coming at the 323 mark. Third down eight. Motion this way. Dembski rolls out, stumbled for a moment. Doesn't have a lot of room, gets to the 35. He'll be ruled out at a, eh, about the 42 or 43. He had to get all the way to the 45, in fact, to penetrate the 45 for a first down. This will be fourth down and two plus. And a little more maneuverability on that sideline. They might have been able to get that first down. He was really just forced out of bounds, not first tackled. Now this will be actually fourth down and slightly less than two. Jeff Ulenek, though, taking no chances. The punt unit has been dispatched onto the field. That'll be Jim Dembski, the quarterback, also doing the punting here. Dembski will take the snap at about his 32-yard line. Good snap, and he's going to fake. Dembski... Might have a tough time getting to the corner. Didn't get it. There was a good job coming up to support that play by Ray Jones, number nine. And even though he did not tackle Dembski, he was the one who kept Dembski from a first down. So the Cavs roll the dice and fake the punt, but they come up close to a yard short on their own side of midfield. In fact, more like a yard and a half short. Maybe a, a step or two of a fake. Uh, it just needed to continue that a little bit more because Jones was being blocked, but, but Dembski took off right away, and Jones read it, and as you said, he's the one that actually slowed Dembski while the rest of the defense recovered because they had some room in the corner. Three minutes left in the quarter. Academy with their strength to the left. They went straight up the middle to Smith, the fullback. Henson will get him. After a gain of four, second down six. Up and out with Mike Eikenberry. Eikenberry also on the play for the Cavs. Number 66. Pretty good, pretty good strength by that young man. He got hit pretty hard at the line of scrimmage and still uh, wiggled forward with some good uh, hard running. Wing is to the left. They'll pitch it this way to Jones. Jones cuts back inside 35-40. He got there in a big hurry for a first down. Shackner on the tackle for Lehman. It'll be a fresh set of four for the visitors from Ohio's capital at the 28-yard line. Timeout, Cavaliers. And Lehman will take timeout. Sydney Holy Angels and Piqua Catholic High Schools consolidated to form Lehman back in 1970. Three years later, Salmon Electric began operations and now marks well over a quarter century of providing quality electrical and electronic services. Salmon Electric salutes Lehman High School along with its fine football teams, which have included three members of the Salmon family, Jeremy, Ryan, and Chad. Lehman's gridiron successes have seen trips to the state playoffs in 1984, 93, 97, 99, 2000, and tonight in 2001. Congratulations, Lehman. This thought from Salmon Electric on Russell Road in Sydney. Also on the telecast tonight on Channel 12, Dave Wilson, State Farm Insurance, Freshway Foods, Super Subbies, Sub Salads and Chili, Myers Garage and drive Through Carry Out in Newport, People's Federal Savings and Loan Association of Sydney, downtown and Walmart, along with Anna and Jackson Center, Emerson Wagner Realty, Errol Browd and Vance Stewart, both of Edward Jones and Company. Hey, we've seen Lehman do that quite often during the season, use uh, timeouts on defense to regroup, and let's see if it helps here in first and ten. We've seen a lot of it. You're exactly right, Mike. There's a fake by Dunn. The left-hander wants to put it up, flushed out of the pocket. Forget it. A.J. Judy will provide finishing touches after Dan Barhorst had a hold down below. No chance to throw there. The Cavaliers with a very good pass rush. This now will make it second down and 16. 
He resembled another Columbus left-hander I've seen on Saturdays. Uh, Careful. <laughs> no, no where to throw the football, and he didn't elude anybody, and went down for a seven-yard loss, second and 17. Wing each way, single back is Smith behind Dunn. Dunn will belly it to Smith, carry it himself. On the option, gets inside the 30-yard line. Palmer on the stop. This will be third down and a couple of yards to go. Plus 10. Yeah, that'll work, Mike. Yeah, two yards to get to the marker and then <laughs> 10 beyond that. You're exactly right. A good effort by Dunn. I think we'll see more of that. That was a clear option series. They faked the dive and, and Dunn kept it. And they had the pitch man pretty well covered. And Dunn got back what he could from the loss a moment ago. Split backs. Wings to the right side. Dunn rolls out again. Gets This time gets away from pressure. Into the open field. 20, 15, 10, 5. Touchdown Academy. Mike, in a very short period of time, that went from a sack to a touchdown. Well, that's the uh, strength, and then you saw the speed down the middle. 29 yards. Two minutes and nine seconds following Lehman's unsuccessful fake punt near midfield. Columbus Academy goes 43 yards. Dunn, who has listed six different places in a starting position on the depth chart, will try the extra point out of the hold of Steve Butt. If he hits it, ball is down, the kick is up, just a little gentle boot, and that's the 50th time he's been successful on a PAT this season. Columbus Academy 7, the Lehman Cavaliers nothing. Mike Meyer at Meyer's Garage and drive through in Newport appreciates his Sydney area customers and is glad to be on this telecast. Meyer's offers complete auto and truck repair and service, including 24-hour towing. They feature Sunoco gasolines, both full and self-serve, and pay at the pump, along with diesel fuel. Propane is also available. That's Meyer's Garage and drive through carry out at Newport at 47 and 66, where the drive through always has a pop special that never has a limit. Mike, we've seen the speed factor. Uh, very definitely. The layman is pretty well him done in up until that last move, but uh, he clearly stepped out of a tackle behind the line of scrimmage and uh, then, uh, like a bolt of lightning, went straight up the middle of the field and got hit but just simply bounced off a couple of people. And uh, clearly a, a superb athlete there running that 29 yards very quickly. Cavaliers need to answer. They've fallen behind 7-0. The turf in pretty good shape here this evening at Julia Lamb. It is, Dave. I have not seen anybody lose their footing at all tonight. And it's a nice night to be outside. No question about that. And I'm not saying that from a closed press box. <laughs> that ball is oops, okay. Didn't knee didn't quite hit by Hewitt up to the 20, 25, 27. Host of tacklers in on the play, and the Cavaliers will go on offense. That's a danger that the Sydney Yellow Jackets ran into last week that a, a punter did in scooping up a punt snap. If that knee hits when you catch the ball, you are down. Well, one thing Lehman is not uh, versed to being behind. They have played from behind before. In fact, this field, the uh, site of one of their uh, greatest comebacks maybe ever when they uh, came back and defeated C.J. that really propelled them to the playoffs. Mike, that not only got them in the playoffs. You look at C.J. and you look at Akron Manchester. Those are the big ones. This is a team that was a win away from not getting in, but those games were so big that they not only are in, they are hosting. There's a two-yard gain that should bring the quarter to an end. Oh, maybe not. Johnson makes the tackle. Football will be declared ready for play. And indeed, it would appear there will be one more snap in this quarter. Also proves we were right that the Akron's not a very good August team, early September. Wow. Lehman dominated them. They won the next week, went to Hamilton Baden and lost in week three, and then ran the table by big margins. Yeah. And Baden got in the playoffs at five and five. Dembski rolls, wants to throw into the sideline. Seger, second chance, he's got it. The tip ball is successful to Justin Seger up to the 43 yard line. That looks to be about a yard short of a first down. So we apparently will be starting the second quarter on third down one. No, they're going to measure before the quarter comes to an end. Dale, keep an eye on that measurement as we will go ahead and check in. It'll be layman ball regardless. Are you considering building a new home, perhaps an addition or renovation? 
Consult the custom craftsmen at Ratterman Custom Home Builders on State Route 47 east of Sydney. They take a personal interest in each and every project and now also offer the very popular solid surface countertops. Call Frank or Amy for a fresh perspective on your next building requirement from Ratterman Custom Home Builders. North Dixie drive through is your complete party supply headquarters from beverages to ice to chips and charcoal and those last minute convenience items like bread and milk. You'll find everything you need from the convenience of your car at North Dixie, just south of I-75 on 25A in Sydney. They're open daily at 10 with Sunday sales available, also featuring all the Ohio lottery games, including the twice weekly lotto. The North Dixie drive through also carries propane. Trade an empty cylinder for a full one at North Dixie. And remember, get your goodies from Woody at North Dixie. Woody Sturm, that is. Mike, one quarter's in the book. Layman's down seven zip. Well, nothing remarkable really on the stats. Andrew Dunn has carried the ball uh, five times for 28 yards. He had negative yards because of the quarterback sacks until that 29-yard run. Layman's leading ball carrier, Tim Badgett, five uh, carries for 15 yards. So uh, both teams finding the offense a little tough to get going. The big play, obviously now, Layman's uh, gamble on fourth down, trying to run from for punt formation, their own territory, and being stopped. And then the quick drive of 40-some yards for the score to 7 nothing in favor of Columbus Academy as we begin the second quarter. With third down and less than a yard is the result of the measurement. Second quarter about to unfold here in the first round of the Division Five playoffs. The winner gets Wheelersburg or Cincinnati Reading. Badge it ahead and lots of room to spare. He gained about four yards. Ray Jones in on the tackle. Also bottom of the stack, Stephen Waterman, number 50. It'll be a fresh set of four for the home team. Third first down of this first half for the Cavaliers. Academy with two of those first downs in the first quarter. First down for the Cavs on Football at the 47. At halftime, we will feature the Lehman Band. There's no band here from Columbus Academy, so we'll go to that immediately. Then our statistics, and then back with third quarter football as Badgett again tries the middle. Following that time for the Cavaliers, Mark Allen, number 70. Ryan Subert making the stop. And he'll pick up four yards, second down six. No doubt the Cavaliers in this first half have uh, definitely wanted to establish Badge at the fullback. That's now his seventh carry. Second and five. Hewitt's uh, carried the ball just three times in this first half. Lehman is into Columbus Academy territory, trailing by seven. Split backs, they'll hand it this way. That's Hewitt cutting back inside, 45, up to almost the 48-yard line. Ray Jones was there, number nine. Stop by David Kegelmeyer. And that will move the chains. First and 10, Lehman. It's their second first down of this sequence, which began at their own 33. Only two passes in this first half so far, both by the Cavaliers. Dempsey has completed both of those to Justin Sager for nine yards and eight yards, respectively. So it's pretty much been a ground attack by both squads so far. But, Mike, it's not that Academy didn't want to throw. They've tried several times. and They've uh, got a sack and a touchdown right. <laughs> as a result. Right. Throw set for Lehman. Dembski rolls out, got company, unloads, oh boy. Almost intercepted by Andrew Dunn, number seven. That falls incomplete, so we will go to second down 10. Again, that was good pressure on uh, Dembski, the quarterback, forced him to unload a little bit early, and receiver not quite ready, went through his hands and almost picked off by Dunn. And so I mean, he's instant offense if he does, touches the ball from that position. Layman seven and three, the higher seed. Academy is nine and one. One of the big differences, Mike, is that Academy played in a conference. Yep, that true. guarantees you a certain number of points, but it also precludes some others. And Layman did win a couple of very, very big games. Hewitt into the open field will get to the 34-yard line. Good job bursting past the line of scrimmage. Robertson in on the tackle, number five. So the Cavaliers now will just need a couple, and Mike, this is four down territory. Oh, without doubt, uh, Lehman's been running the ball with some success, especially Badgett up the middle. They have some superior size and strength they'll try to use on third down and short yardage here. Third and a long yard. There we get a look at the Cavs as they come to the line of scrimmage. Split backs, long count. This will be Badgett. 
kicking it outside, maybe short, we'll check the spot. 